Hi, I'm Carl with Apt, and this is the Samsung QN65 Q7F, one of their brand new QLED TVs for 2017, and so far they're on a roll. This is another great set from Samsung, and in this video we'll talk about why. And in case you haven't seen it already, we also have a video on the new Q8C as well, so make sure you check that one out too. And don't forget, if you like any of these TVs, we do offer free shipping to the contiguous US, and you can order them right from our website. And don't forget, you can always call into the store too to see what kinds of deals we have going on for all of our products with the design of this one. It's got that almost non-existent bezel that we've been getting on most all the new TVs, which looks great. You don't even notice it's there when you've got a picture up on the screen. It's got the same pedestal as the Q8C TV, only it's straight across instead of curved to match the design of the Q7F. It looks really good. My only gripe with Samsung pedestals has been that they're a little wobbly. It still holds the TV up just fine, and there's really no worries about it falling over. I just don't want my TV to move around once it's up. This obviously won't affect anyone who's mounting this on the wall, but for those putting it on a stand, you may notice what I'm talking about. Now, speaking about mounting this on the wall, there's also an optional no-gap wall mount that you can get, which makes this look incredible when it's mounted. And with the invisible cable going from the one connect box to the TV, you don't even have to hide the wire behind your wall because it's so thin. It's a really cool design. Samsung also provides you with some curved elbows to use to prevent the cable uh, from getting damaged uh, if you bend it too far. There's also a cleaning cloth that comes with it so you can keep all the fingerprints off the screen and off the One Connect box. And I know it doesn't matter a whole lot, but I actually like the back of this TV better than the Q8C2. It's way darker and it just looks nicer, but not everyone's gonna agree with me on that. Now, let's take a quick look at the One Connect box. Here you're going to find all the inputs. There's four HDMI inputs, three USB inputs, an Ethernet connection, an antenna hookup, an RS-232 input, and an optical audio output because you will definitely want to hook this up to a better sound system. It's also got Bluetooth headset support, but I tried my Bose QC35 headphones on it and they wouldn't hook up, so I need to do a little more testing on that front, but uh, for some reason the Bose wasn't working with it. I want to make sure to mention the remote as well because it's got a really nice design to it. It's heavier than it looks, it has a microphone built in for voice control options, and it can control the products you have connected to the One Connect box as long as they're compatible. So how does the picture look, you might be wondering? Well, I think it looks really good. Right out of the box, the reds and the greens seemed blown out and we were losing some of the details in the dark areas of the screen, but we were able to adjust it to levels that we were really happy with. So it might be a little more work dialing this one in than some of the other TVs that are available, but once you do, you'll be really happy. Brightness was good across the entire screen and I didn't see a whole lot of banding. There was a little bit uh, that showed up here and there, but we're not really sure if it was the TV or if it was the camera that the stuff was filmed on. I didn't really notice it happening all that much too, which was nice. It's also edge lit, which some people might not be thrilled with, but I didn't find myself wishing it was full array at any point. Plus, edge lit in general means you're gonna save a little bit of money over a full array set too, which is always a good thing. HDR content looked really good, and so did the 1080p content that we watched, um, which was good to see. Upscaling was really nice and it didn't look unnatural. I've really, so far, been impressed with all the new higher end 2017 TVs we've been looking at. The last thing about this set that's really worth mentioning is the smart menu. It's really similar to last year's, but it still works well. I wasn't noticing much lag going from app to app, and everything was laid out really nicely too. The voice control works well in navigating uh, to where you need to go, but you have to make sure to speak clearly. I didn't think the microphone was picking up quite as well on this one as some of the other brands of microphones that we've tested, but I didn't find that to be any kind of a deal breaker. Definitely a TV worth checking out if you're in the market to replace that DLP that you keep having to buy bulbs for. But seriously, this is a really good looking set. Have any of you had a chance to see this one in person yet? What'd you think? Is QLED going to give OLED TVs a run for their money? Make sure to let us know in the comments section below. And also, we're, as we get these new TVs in for 2017, we're going to be doing more and more videos and we're going to do some comparison videos. So make sure you don't forget to subscribe to our channel to stay updated on all the cool new products we're going to have here at App.